So I'm very particular when it comes to my web browser. Everyone knows who watches my channel knows that I'm a Vivaldi user and I love Vivaldi for very particular reasons. But I do like to check out other browsers from time to time and I also revisit some of the ones that I've already taken a look at to see if they've improved, to see if they've made themselves good enough where I could actually see myself using them. So today we're going to re revisit Brave Browser. Now I took a look at Brave Browser a couple of years ago and in that brief look I had some what I think are legitimate concerns about its usability for myself. Now. I will always say that my way of using a web browser is not a normal way of using a web browser. I am a tab hoarder. I'm, I have the card, the t-shirt, and the lifelong membership to that club. I collect and hoard tabs to an obscene extent. Now, I would not say that I'm the worst tab hoarder in the world. I, every time I say that, someone says, well, I have 5,000 tabs open. You win, okay? I don't have that many, but I always range between 70 to 150 to 200 tabs open at any given time. And one of the reasons why I like Vivaldi so much is because it allows me to organize those tabs. So every time I review a browser, I have to kind of keep that in mind that this hat, I'm reviewing it based on how I use it, which is not how everyone else uses it. So just keep that in mind in terms of how I frame the rest of this, you know, review, because it's, it's going to come out through the way I use a web browser, which is just the only way that I can do it. So let's go ahead and take a look at brave again. So, so this is brave browser right here. And first off in terms of look and feel hasn't changed enormous out of the box, but there are some significant changes from the last time I actually used this first off we're going to cover the grouping of tabs because this is the most important feature for me again it's not the most important feature for everyone else but still i'm going to go ahead and cover it right off the top in vivaldi there are workspaces and there are tab stacks no other browser outside of like opera has those types of things and because that's true or uh, let me rephrase that no other browser has them and does them well or well together not yet anyways. Zen, maybe eventually Zen Browser gets there, maybe eventually Florp gets there, but they're not to the level of how good Vivaldi does those things. So, that, but this one here only does tab groups and it does them in the Chrome way, at least for the most part. In other words, you have your groups up here at the top and that's a big deal for me because I usually have anywhere between eight and 10 different groups and that can take up space that's meant for tabs because the group names are sharing space with your tabs, right? So it does mean that that top bar, if you have a whole bunch of tabs open and you have a whole bunch of groups can get very, very crowded. This was a problem that I had back when I looked at Brave the first time. It was an issue. This time it's still an issue because that's still the way that they do it. But you can, if you want to, not give the groups a name. So it can just be the icon like this one here. And that will allow you to save some space, which is nice. A new feature since the last time I looked at it, however, is the ability to save a tab. And this feature would be so good if it worked the way you thought it would work. So let's, I have a group here called main. And the way I thought that group saving would work is if I accidentally close this tab, this group, I would be able to actually, you know, go back to that group, but that's not the way it is. There's actually not a way to close it. Now that's not a big deal because you know, you can just ungroup th that group like so, but then it goes away. Like you can't go back to that group once you've ungrouped it. <laughs> and that, so your saving of that group only works if the browser is closed and reopened which is a useless feature. And why I say it's a useless feature is because there's already that feature. If you go into settings down here and you click on this line right here, continue where you left off, that will remember your groups. So if you have that on, the whole saving of the groups thing is completely useless. What would be cool in the way that I personally thought it would work is if you accidentally ungrouped your groups or if you accidentally closed a group, if there was a way to do that, you could actually reopen that group of groups or that ta group of tabs, I should say, by having your saved group groups here, which you can't do from what I can tell. Now, like I said, that's not a big deal, but it feels like it's a feature that didn't need to exist because it doesn't work in any special way, right? It just remembers the groups that you had open when you 
created those groups if you hit the setting to do so. So if you add this to group and then you add new group and hit save group, it'll actually add that to this space here in the in the bookmarks bar. But again, because it doesn't actually do anything other than just remember that group to when you reopen the browser, like you can just click on that and it will reopen it. That doesn't seem all that useful for me because again, the browser already does that. Now, maybe there's a situation where your, your browser does forget your tabs and then it would be useful. But if that happens, then there's a problem with the browser itself and therefore there's a bug, right? So it's possible that it could just protect you from some bugs. But outside of that, all it does for me personally is it takes up space. So I have gotten to the habit of just not saving the groups and just having this feature on so that it remembers the groups as it always would have anyways. So that, in terms of tab grouping, I'm not impressed. Now, it would have taken a lot for me to be impressed. To be honest, I'm very picky when it comes to tab grouping because Vivaldi does it so damn well. But I know that about myself and I know that I'm being picky. For the vast majority of people who are not tab hoarders, None of this is a big deal because the way that it does groups is perfectly fine. You'll have a couple groups, you'll grab, group them together. If you need to save them, you can save them. And you don't even have to have this on because a lot of people probably don't use their browser this way, right? They probably have the open new tab page or open to a home page or whatever. And they don't have it remember the tabs that they had open when the, the browser closed. Probably. I'm just guessing there. Me personally, I always have the same amount of tabs open no matter whether the browser is open or closed. I want it to remember everything. So that's maybe just, again, the way that I use a browser. So there's that. So another few things that are brand new since the last time I looked. One of them is the ability to use vertical tabs. In traditional Brave fashion, they've kind of managed to fuck vertical tabs up just a little bit. Now, I know that this is a tacked on feature, but it's not a tacked on feature like some of the Firefox browsers do where they're actually using an extension. This is built in, but it's something that they added after, right? So maybe they're still working on it, but there are a few things here that just really super bug me. First off, tab groups don't work well in in, in vertical tab mode. They just don't. And that's a that's a shame because that's a premier feature, right? So as you can see, first off, if you if you have the tabs collapsed and you have a name of a group there, it actually shows you part of a letter. Like, what? That's not good design at all. Also, if you have one here that doesn't have a a name and is expanded, it actually like there's like a blank space there. <laughs> <laughs> right now that's a consequence of the way tab groups work and the fact that you didn't give it a name but it's still that's a complete waste of space if if the if what they should do while in vertical mode at least is to make a drop down of some kind or a, a collapsible accordion of some kind something that means that it's not going to take space because you actually have a lot less space when you're using vertical tabs than you do when you're using uh, horizontal tabs at least the way that's the way that it makes me feel right so vertical vertical tabs are not done well anywhere outside of microsoft edge and that's a sad, sad thing to say. Even Vivaldi doesn't do them perfectly well. Um, they're okay. And Zen Browser, people will tell me, well, Zen Browser is built with f vertical tabs in mind. I did not like them because by default, there's not even a way to close the tabs. You have to right uh, middle click with the scroll wheel on your mouse. And if you don't have a middle uh, scroll wheel on your mouse, what do you have to do? There, oh, there's probably like a key binding or something like that, right? So, that's beside the point. That's a rant for another browser. <laughs> but but anyways, the point is that vertical tabs aren't done anywhere and done well anywhere. And Brave is no exception to that. It's They're just not well done. So I don't use them. And that's just kind of the thing. So to go back to horizontal tabs, you go here. And this is uh, much more usable. Okay, so the next thing that they've added since the last time I used it is AI. Now, I do have to cover this because this is one of their premier features. And it works similar to the way you'd use ChatGPT if you've ever used ChatGPT. So you can go in here and say, I would like a bash script that will change the wallpaper in Qtile. And I even misspelled it. We'll see how that works. Sure, here's a simple bash script. It'll actually use Qtile itself. So it's not going to use a third party program, which is interesting. It's an interesting way to do it, right? So that's that's AI, right? It's not I'm not going to talk much about it, but it's here. It's in the sidebar. It can in fact be turned off. So if you go over here to Leo, you can turn it off so it doesn't show up in the sidebar. And that's the way that should be. I have a feeling that Leo is still there in the background, even if you turn this off, given how 
you know fast it goes away but still it's there you can turn it off if you don't want it the second thing that has been added or at least has been improved since the last time i used this is the search itself so if you go to the brave search which is their default search first off i'll say it is super fast now it's possible that I'm just used to using Cirques, and Cirques is notoriously slow. I was surprised by how fast it was. Second of all, the search results are actually pretty damn good. I would, I, I will have to say that from the last time I used the Brave Search, the search is actually pretty good. I haven't done a ton of searching, because uh, I don't actually do a lot of searching these days. But from the searches that I have done, the results have been actually pretty good so i've been trying to i've tried to do some more esoteric searches and things like that and they do a pretty good job they like google does tend to over inflate the reddit results so if that's not something that you want that's not great but you can kind of just pass those by if you want to maybe grouping them together is actually better instead of having a whole page of them you know either way right but they do have that right there at the top but other than that, I will say that the Brave Search has gotten way better, at least in my brief experience over the last few days, than it was before. So there's some good kudos. Now the next thing that I had a big problem with when I used Brave before was their over-reliance on crypto nonsense. And apparently that's how they've chosen to make their money. And given the fact that they've been around now for, what, 10 years or something like that? Like, they've been around for a very long time, and they're still doing it? They must be making enough money off from their crypto nonsense to make the money they need to make to uh, carry on their, their browser. And if that's true, congratulations, guys. I, I don't have anything else to say about that, but I will say is that the crypto nonsense is still here. So if you go into settings, there's a whole panel here for Web3. And it's a little bit confusing because you would think that the settings here would control the Web3 stuff in Brave, but really what this does is control how Brave reacts to Web3 around the internet. So how into Web3 stuff you are will depend on how much you actually use this. You can go elsewhere, not here, to disable the Brave stuff if you want to. And that's what I've done. So like the Brave wallet over here is not accessible for me. I, I hid the icon. I do think I still have the wallet thing over here. That's just because it doesn't bother me. I just, whatever. But overall, you can still hide that stuff away. I won't say that you can disable it because you can't, but you can at least hide it away, which is good. So there's that. So the next thing that I wanted to check to see if it's actually improved was the sync technology because Brave has always done sync in a weird but cool way. They are, again, pretty obsessed with blockchain technology, so they based all their searching stuff, or excuse me, their syncing stuff on blockchain technology, which has oh, was always a problem for me, not because it wasn't cool, but because they never actually synchronized open tabs. I am happy to announce that they have fixed that problem. So if you download Brave on iOS, I don't know about it on Android, but at least on iOS, and you choose the right option. So if, you, if I go here to sync, you can actually see that it will allow you to sync open tabs now. And your reading list and the theme and the history, everything is now syncable between devices. Not only on mobile, but between two different Brave browsers on two different computers, you can now synchronize tabs. That is, it, it shouldn't be, but that is game changing because before when I tried it, you could not do that. And the fact that you can now means that this is actually usable for those of us who have different devices. That's great. Let's get rid of Leo AI here, shall we? We don't want to see you anymore, Leo. But anyways, the point is that the synchronization stuff is way better than it was before. It's very easy to set up. All you have to do is take a picture of a, of a QR code and it will set it all up for you. You turn on what you want to sync and it syncs. It does a good job. I will say there's no sync now button. So if you want to force it to sync right now, you can't. You kind of have to wait for it to do it. But I haven't noticed too many times where it's been delayed, like where I open up a tab here and it's not on the mobile like immediately. It, it you know pretty much shows up right away, which is good, right? So you, maybe you don't need the synchronize now button, but Firefox and Vivaldi both have sync now buttons, and I looked for it, but it's not here. One of the things that was kind of bothered me is this side panel here. Now, at first I thought that there was no way to hide it, but if you go to appearance and then go, scroll all the way down, you can choose to never show that, which is nice. Okay, I would prefer to have it go away. 
But in, in Vivaldi, there's actually a button that's there available all the time. So if you need something there, you can show it and then hide it away. So maybe I'm, again, holding everything to Vivaldi standards, but I told you I was going to do that. Another thing that kind of bothers me about it is that it's not that useful because you can't add things to it, right? It just has a set number of things that you can add to it. Those are the things that they've decided that you can add to it. So you can't, like, add a web panel like you can in Vivaldi. So again, maybe I'm comparing this too much to Vivaldi. but I, if I'm going to use this thing and have it there, I want it to be useful. And these options just aren't useful. So they have the AI thing. They have Brave Talk, which is just a front end for Jitsi as far as I'm aware. And no, you can't have access to my camera, so you can go away. There is the wallet thing, which again, you can hide this if you need to. I just haven't really paid much attention. It has access to your bookmarks, which is okay, but I have them here. I don't, I mean, again, it's okay. You can, it's probably better, easier to manage your bookmarks here and you can search for them, which is nice. So that can be useful, but I don't use it. Another thing is the reading list, which is another thing that I just don't use. I use pocket or whatever I have on my phone at the current time. So the, the, the sidebar is just not as useful, again, as the one in Vivaldi, which is not a big deal because I don't use the one in Vivaldi very much either. But still, the fact that it's there and you have to go spelunking into the settings to turn it off is a little annoying. So there's that. Overall, guys, the experience of using Brave was pretty good. And I have to say I'm surprised by that feeling. Because when I used it before, I bitched a lot about the Web3 stuff. I bitched about the tab groups, which I did. It. Uh, admittedly, I did that here too. And I bitched about the sync. Those are the three big things that I bitched about the last time. And this time, they didn't feel as big of a deal. So first off, the tab groups, while they're not good, would be okay if I were not a tab hoarder. So I, from a perspective of that, they're fine. Not great. I really wish that whole saving of tab groups was more useful. But I, And I also wish that they were actually usable in vertical tabs. I wish they would do vertical tabs well, but, you know, whatever. And then the synchronization stuff was completely fixed, which was good. And I will have to say that the overall experience of actually using the browser was also quite excellent. It was fast, the search was really, really good, and it just felt like a very good and cohesive product, right? So I really enjoyed my time with Brave Browser this time. Now, the question that always has to be asked at the end of any of these things where I'm kind of looking at something else as an alternative to what I use is, will I be switching? And the answer to that is no, of course not. <laughs> Of course not, because I am a tab hoarder, as I said before, and that behavior is so ingrained the way that I do my work and do this channel and, you know, do my main job and all that stuff. Being a tab hoarder for those, you know, because of those reasons, even though those are really more excuses, I couldn't use something that doesn't do tab groups really, really well. And unfortunately, there's just not one out there other than Vivaldi that does that. I thought Zen was going to be there, but it does weird things with workspaces. It just doesn't work the way that you expect it to work. So, again, Vivaldi has my heart until something else comes along and actually does those things that I needed to do well. So, there you go. I revisited Brave Browser overall. Thumbs up. For the vast majority of people, Brave Browser is probably a really good alternative if you don't like Firefox and you don't want to spend any time on Chrome. I will, I will say, just as a note, that if you need to use uBlock Origin, there is a setting in the settings panel for Brave that will allow you to turn Manifest V3 back on for certain extensions. So that means that you can use a Chrome-based browser and still use the full-fledged version of uBlock Origin, which is excellent. The fact that they built that in and will probably keep it in, good job. Uh, because otherwise, you'd have to use something like Firefox or Vivaldi, which, as far as I know, Vivaldi hasn't really decided what they're doing yet. So we'll see what direction they go. So the fact that Brave built that in is really nice. So anyways, if you have thoughts on Brave, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Linuxcast, just like all of these fine people thanks to everybody who does support me over on patreon and youtube and kofi you guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you very very much for your support again if you want to join those people patreon.com slash the linux cast or youtube kofi links will be in the video description you can also head on over to the store which is available at shop.thelinuxcast.org there you'll find all sorts of awesome merchandise which goes directly towards helping me make more linux content for you guys and you get awesome merch in return so that shop that the linux cast.org thanks everybody for watching and i'll see you next time